Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Cole and I speak to Dr. Liz Lister about, I don't know what it is, John. What, what, oh, talk, I know what it Dr. is. Dr. Liz Hi, about Dr. Today. Liz. How are you today? Doing great. How are you? Uh, good. I know the topic, Art. It's napping. Oh. And I'm talking about na I'm talking about my favorite pastime is taking a good nap. Now, Dr. Liz, I got a lot of questions, but I have to start out with my family history. My father was a napper. He could put his head down and pass out for almost he could almost control it. For if he wanted to do 20 minutes, he'd take a 20 minute nap. If he wanted to do four minutes, it would be a 40 minute nap. I inherited, and I think it is. Uh, an inheritable trait. I inherited the ability to do the same thing. I've done it all my life, and it's it's a wonderful, wonderful, what do you call it, trick? Um, ability, gift. Yeah, it, it just, you know, it's, even when in my 30s I could take a nap, and it's just so refreshing. But here's my question for you today. Yes. Here I am in my 70s, mm -hmm. and I still take naps today. I need those naps. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I've had a busy morning, and all of a sudden, it's a real pleasure to sit on the porch and take a nap. Is that a bad thing at my age? And, you know, later life, somewhere over 60, should we not be napping for any reason? Are you, are you concerned that you're going to take a nap and not wake up? <laughs> no, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, good. But but I I can't control them like I once did. I used to be you know. Oh, my 30s, got you. Okay. Forties. I I could almost tell myself, I I've got fifteen minutes. Let's take a nap. You know. And sure. I sometimes I would just wake up, and it would be when I wanted to wake up. But now, I would say I'd you know I'll just close my eyes for fifteen minutes, and it's an hour before I get up. Gotcha. Okay, great. Well, you've asked a number of questions, so I have a few comments for you. Okay, good. Okay. First of all, your love of naps is, I share that love of naps, and half of the world shares that love of naps. Oh, really? And, and the practice. That's half, interesting. At least half the world regularly, routinely naps somewhere between one and four in the afternoon. So wow. that's, that's number one. So it's very common it's probably somewhat built into us as humans. So I'll speak mm -hmm. more generally, but then let's come to what you're talking about. It, the idea about napping is that it's totally fine as long as it's not disrupting nighttime sleep. So it looks like us as human beings, we have two phases in our 24 hour-ish circ circadian rhythm where we get tired and we sleep at night However, also about eight hours, usually about eight hours after waking up, we have a little bit of an afternoon dip, okay? People usually think it's maybe because they had a big lunch, but it happens whether or not you have lunch. It is part of our rhythm of wakefulness and sleepiness, okay? So that's part of it, it's kind of built in. As far as, there, there isn't any, I didn't see any data that the napping changes as we get older, but we do know that our melatonin production changes as we get older. So mm -hmm. potentially, we have, I mean, there's lots of fun things that I wanna share with you about napping, uh, but we can always talk some more about what's happening with you, but I'm just asking myself, if your nighttime sleep is as deep and as continuous, and that might be why, why you might be feeling a little bit more daytime sleepiness. But mm. the answer is that napping is a good thing. Oh, that's good that's, to hear. That's where, yeah, exactly. I know. Well, I, I'm happy about that too. What's a bad thing? I just, I, you know, it's too much fun. Yeah. Well, it's kind My of interesting. Mom, I, I, I also have a, uh, uh, have always had the ability to fall asleep almost any place, any time. Uh, they, they even left to me when I was in the military. We would be on a, a truck going down a bumpy road, and I put my head on a tailgate. <laughs> I'd sleep right through till we got there. And get up and feel very refreshed. I always felt exactly. refreshed, but as I, yeah, but as I got right. as I've gotten older, and I can always when I go to sleep, I never use an alarm. If I need to get up at six a.m., 
I'd be up at wow. 6 a.m. So I had an internal clock to do that. So it's always been sort of like a, a joke around the family that I could do that. But now we find that uh, I don't nap during the day. I like to lay down and rest and maybe uh, watch a, a news program or a movie or something like that during the day. But I don't fall asleep unless I crawl under the covers. So that's a new phenomenon for me for the last maybe uh, three or four years. Unless I get really yeah. under the covers, I don't nap anymore. Mm. Interesting. Well, my mother also has that ability, uh, like you were sharing, John, about your dad. Uh, she's always been able to do the power nap. And I love yeah. the phrase power nap. It was invented by one of my college professors, Dr. James Moss. He wrote a book called Power Sleep. And he was riffing on, this was in the 80s, and he was riffing on the power lunch that was oh, the yeah. discussion in businesses. He sure. said, you know, getting good rest and even a short, quick nap during the day <clears throat> is so helpful to productivity that people should consider the power nap. Uh, <clears throat> and so my mom was able to do that too. Yeah. My mom has been, she could like just dial it in every day when she was at work, she could just take a short nap and then feel refreshed. So the limit seems to be about 30 minutes, 15 to 30 minutes seems to be a sweet spot for yeah. a nap that doesn't yeah. make you feel groggy afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you wake up refreshed. Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, melatonin. Mm. And um, I haven't taken mm. it in a long time, but I used to take, not regularly, but I used to take melatonin tablets. Uh, is is that as a sleep aid as opposed to ever needing um, sleepies or a, a, a commercial product to get to bed? Um, is, is melatonin okay for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's some people who, some authors who wrote a book called The Melatonin Miracle, and they go on and on. It's a very long list about all of the illnesses that have a, a lower incidence when people take melatonin. That's their assertion in this book. Uh -huh. My personal take on that is that when you get good sleep, you have better health. Hmm, sure. And replenishing melatonin is no problem. You pretty much, you can't overdose with it. Uh, I, I'm a big fan. Oh, good. Some people can use melatonin. What's interesting is sometimes people respond better to less. All right. So, so let, I've had, let, let, I've had patients Let me ask a question about that. I've never taken that. and I've heard of it. But I still, even to today, uh, I I have the ability when I go to, to, uh, to bed at night, no matter whether I'm super tired or not, regular time or not, uh, I put my head into the pillow. By the time it sinks to the bottom of the pillow, I'm gone. So, okay, you shouldn't brag about that. Oh, no. Then I, no. I'll take it back. A, a lot of people do not have that gift. Oh, and yeah. I'm going to say that women listening to that would say, yep, I, can, I know a lot of men who they, they fall asleep that easily, but I take care of a lot of women who do not fall asleep that easily. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. but, but it's, not, it's not a bad it's not a bad thing. I, I I shouldn't be slapping myself and staying away. Oh no! <laughs> not gosh. a bad thing. Okay, good. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. Right now, that's interesting, Art, because uh, for all my ability to nap almost any time, anywhere, um, I don't fall asleep very quickly when I when I get to bed. Hmm. And it's something about it might be psychological. You know how you you really can't sleep unless you're under the covers. Mm -hmm. Maybe for me, it's no, like I can't I nap. And... I can sleep. I can't nap. Really, kind of. Oh, okay. When I'm ready to go down for the night, okay, this pony doesn't stand on his legs. He lays down, closes his eyes, it's gone. Yeah. So, John, well, that makes me think about what you were saying about taking a longer nap. If you're taking an hour nap, I would not be surprised to hear that you would have a little more trouble falling asleep that evening. Ah, uh, mm. yeah. yeah. That so would make sense. It is. There, there is some kind of a balance um, for all the sleep you get, eight hours of sleep versus 16 hours of l waking or something like that. You, you, yes. you, you don't want to have too much sleep. Okay, there's, a, there's data coming out lately, which we're talking about napping right now, yeah. but uh, we could take a look at that. That's, there's some interesting data suggesting that there is such a thing as too much sleep. I'm a little worried about that because I love to sleep. <laughs> so I, I have a question for you because I'm, this is sort of one of the most encouraging conversations we've had, not because it's about napping, but it's about nobody's found anything wrong with it. 
In other words, <laughs> there are so many things. I'll the contrary. Okay, you can eat right? eggs, you can't eat eggs. Uh, uh, meat is good for you, meat is not good for you. Uh, so we get all these things, but it's, this seems to be a constant. Napping is okay. No, no, there's plenty of, there's naysayers. Don't nap, it'll interfere with your nighttime sleep. And that does actually not appear to be the case. Mm. A short daytime nap, Yeah. It not too late, okay, right? We've got about that eight hour after waking up kind of dip. So if you mm. are riding that wave in yeah. your own body's rhythm and you're keeping it under 30 minutes, you're you're good to go. Yeah. They call it, Mm -hmm. That's interesting because that's exactly where my naps these days in, in retirement. That's where my naps happen is after lunch. Yes, well, indeed. Yeah, well, yeah I, that's a natural I have rhythm. Better, we might want to think about taking a nap now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in famous company. A lot of famous people. Einstein, Napoleon. Oh. Mm -hmm. they, they were. Wow. No, they, they articulated their love of napping. Churchill, Winston Churchill used to plan his meetings around his planned quick naps during the day. Wow, wow. Oh, that's good. Not that's out good. well, so there you go. Wow, I'm in famous company. That's yeah, great to hear. I, I'm gonna start oh. referring to you as Sir John Coleman. <laughs> well, this is great. I, and unfortunately, it's energized me. I'm not gonna need a nap today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Liz, thank you so much. This is great information. And of course, um, wonderful for me to hear because I love Love napping. We'll see you soon after we all get a good, good nap. nap. A good nap. Wonderful. And a good, and a good night's sleep. Yes. Yes. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.